Well, let's quickly turn our attention to some breaking news coming in right now. The United States has ruled out any extradition for the American-born LET terrorist David Coleman Headley. Headley, in lieu of providing critical information to the U.S. agencies about various other terror outfits, the Mumbai attack accused also agreed to cooperate with the government as well as any foreign judicial proceedings held inside U.S. through video conferencing a deposition. Let's get in more from our correspondent J.S. Bedi, who now joins us with more details on the story we're breaking to you right now. He's joining us from Chicago. J.S., just take us through the details of what you're picking up, what exactly is being said as far as the extradition or really that not happening is concerned. Uh, today, government, the United States government has approached the district court Chicago with a request that they are refusing, they have agreed uh, not to they are in agreement with Hadley not to extradite him to Denmark, Pakistan, or even India. Mm. Uh, they have also requested and pleaded before the court that he should be given some 30 to 35 years of imprisonment and not, not the life sentence, uh, keeping in mind his cooperation with the U.S. government. Uh, they, they have released a 20-page document uh, which has three major factors which need everybody's attention. One of the factors is that they have said that the Hadley, during his interrogation, gave a wide detail of lashkar e taiba which is LED, uh, as regards its organizational structure, leadership, and other personal recruiting method, uh, methods, fundraising, training, planning, and potential targets. They also said that uh, after his arrest, for some time, they did not declare mm -hmm. the arrest to the general public, during which they made Hadley speak to prominent characters across in Pakistan and related to this conspiracy mm. and gathered a lot of information as regards all this plot was concerned. And also they have in detail given how and how they gathered the information regarding some of the players in this conspiracy. Mm. And for example, Sajid Meer, Abu Kafa, Mazhar Iqbal, Mazhar Iqbal was an ISI right. officer. Right and other, including Elias Kashmiri and Rana. But Jess, that's the whole thing. This obviously comes as a big setback as far as Indian investigations are concerned. As far as David Coleman Headley coming out and helping America with information is concerned, how much can America actually include and actually find out about what they're seeking to find? Now, uh, I, uh, during the trial, I had spoken to the federal prosecutor. Uh, he had said that there is a lot of information they have but not everything has been uh, presented in the court. At, at, at this moment, uh, what we have seen is that they are releasing the information and the evidence in bits and pieces before the court and trying to use to achieve the aim of getting them the sentence which they want. Like in case of Rana, right. they got him right. implicated in three, but they could only get away getting him sentenced mm. or imprisoned for one count. Same is the case with Headley. Sure. Now he has sure. acknowledged that he is guilty on all 12 counts and uh, they are seeking not the life imprisonment mm -hmm. but only only the 30, 35 years. Jess Bedi, many thanks for having joined us live with those important details that you're sharing with us on the breaking we're talking to our viewers about right now. The fact remains as far as David Coleman Headley is concerned, it's been clarified by America that there's going to be no extradition whatsoever to India. Jess Bedi taking us through the details. Let's move on. It's been more than a month since the horrific gang rape and murder of Delhi's Braveheart. And while the nation has been clamoring for stricter laws on women's safety, this is all what it comes down to. The three-member commission appointed by the central government in the aftermath of the December 16 gang rape will be submitting its report today after a month of intense deliberation with legal experts and social activists across the country. The commission had also received lacks of suggestions from the common man on how to strengthen the laws governing women's safety in the country and implement them better. The three-member committee is being headed by Justice J.S. Swarma, a former Chief Justice of India. It also comprises Justice Leela Seth former Chief Justice of Himachal Pradesh and Gopal Subramaniam, former Solicitor General of India. Amongst the likely recommendations of the committee are gentle sensitization of the police force across the country, time-bound trials in cases of any form of violence against women and the inclusion of stalking and molestation under the purview of criminal laws.